Hi there YouTube, Mr. Ray Bradley here. We are at Sajuna and we've fixed the scenery. Welcome! Uh, today's fight will be a simple, single direction kind of affair. We'll be uh, taking off from Sajuna and we'll be heading pretty much straight down to uh, Port Lincoln. On the way we're going to fly over some coastlines and some bays. Um, yeah, but apart from that, no stops. We will be flying over an airfield called Streaky Bay. We won't be stopping there, but we'll fly over the top. There it is here. Um, there you see Elliston, Venus Bay in here, um, Smoky Bay, <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> yep, then straight into Port Lincoln. You won't actually be flying via the IFR airway directly, we'll actually be flying a direct line, IFR airline, IFR way comes through uh, Cami. So we'll be flying ever so slightly to the east of that line. Anyway, hello there, Nick and Spencer. How are you doing? If I get a knock on the door, it might be the Australian Army coming to test me for COVID. It's probably going to happen tomorrow. But because I live in apparently the worst suburb for COVID-19 infections, they're actually sending the army down to our suburb to uh, test everybody. Great fun. Wait a second, that's not the entrance. <laughs> This is the fluky scenery, unadulterated. Have this nice little pagoda area out here, very nice. Couple wooden seats to sit down on. Let's head through the terminal building. Can't see my aircraft. Where is it? Has someone parked a Beechcraft on top of it? In anyway, a Juna Airport with the writing on top of the building here. Let's head around the edge. Good Tag Lachlan. So yeah, apparently the uh, COVID test isn't that pleasant. Not too bad, but you know. I guess I'll not have to drive my car and wait in the line for several hours to get it done. I'm assuming. That um, the army will come to us. So if you remember from last flight, which was, what, Tuesday I think it was, um, we flew in from Cooper PD. <coughs> haven't fueled up yet, so we're going to have to refill the aeroplane before we move out, because we do need more than 20 minutes of fuel. <laughs> so basically the idea will be we'll jump on board, we'll get the tie downs off. Do the basic checks, but we won't do the fuel drains. Then we'll refuel. Then we'll do the fuel drains. Uh, we don't need extra fuel in the outside tanks, so we don't need anything in these um, wing tips. But we need, uh, we don't even need full tanks, but we might as well put it in. Grab the fuel while we can. No need to uh, be particularly budgeting on the fuel. Doors open, let's jump on in. Hey, Red 997, g'day. 
drop some flaps. Cool. That's pretty much all we need to do inside for the moment. Flaps. Nice and solid, looking good in there. The other ones. What's in here? Yeah, it's a little bit in there. Tie downs and chocks are off. I need to put some more fuel in. No nicks in the props. Spinner's looking good, and the air intakes are all clear. Oil's looking happy about, what's that, seven quarts. Pitot cover is off. Good stuff. What's in here? Yeah, a little bit of fuel. Aileron's happy. So are the flaps. Static port. Flying winds flying. Trim tabs happy. Alrighty, we're just going to move the aircraft up to uh, the fuel bowser over there. Probably could just drag it over, but you know, there's no one there, so might as well taxi on over. Let's close the door over. Fast version of what we did yesterday, have you? <laughs> Right, she is cold, so I will push that up. Make sure we're on the center tanks. Couple of shots of primer. Batteries in. Pumps on. Checking for the green. There it is. Cracking the throttle. Clear prop. Started well. Cool. Let's go ahead and taxi up there. Turning on the uh, radio so we can hear anybody around. Think around 126.7, good stuff. So, during the traffic, Delta Oscar Echo is a Papa Comanche. We'll be taxiing uh, from the apron. Over to the uh, fuel bowser. Brakes are off. Looking clear. Let's go. Flaps coming up. T 
Sixième bonnette, que dingue! weird markings over here Break is on, 1000 RPM. All right, let's get some fuel. Cool. Let's uh, pop a credit card into this thing. Where's the static line? Alrighty, static line. We'll bring that over to the top of the aircraft. Make sure our passenger gets out of the aircraft. Cool. And a hose. Bring that to the front of the wing over here. And I'm happy with full center tanks. I'll just fill it all the way up. Bing. And fill this one all the way up. And we have 260 litres on board. Close that up. Grab the static line. If only things could go this quickly in the real world. Stop the pump. Pay the card. And we're back in. Closing the door. 
should we push it back a little bit? I feel like we should. Yeah, why not? Back onto the main concrete. That should be enough. Cool, so let's talk about our flight plan. The first thing we want to do is listen to the AWIS. AWIS. And to do that, I'm going to grab out the phone and give it a call. Weather Information Service, Sejuna Airport, time 0744 Zulu, wind 230 degrees magnetic at 6 knots, visibility 18 kilometers, cloud clear below 10,000 feet, temperature 16, dew point 12, QNH 1024 hectopascals, rainfall last 10 minutes nil. Automated weather information. Okay, so it's going to be runway 29er. QNH 1024. Let's talk about exit. So we're facing west as we come out. So it's going to be a nice, easy down, downwind departure. Uh, once we come out of the downwind, we are going to take up a heading. The heading will be 138. Five, six, seven, eight. About there. What's our heading at the moment? Showing uh, 30, 40, 44, 43. Cool. Okay, after Sejuna, we're tra tracking out to Laura Bay, which is only going to be four minutes. Uh, from Laura Bay, it's to Smoky Bay. Four minutes again. Smoky Bay to Abeam Haslam, which is offshore. From Haslam, we're to Streaky Bay, seven minutes. Streaky Bay to Venus Bay, in, um, no, that's seven minutes. Right? Eleven minutes. Venus Bay to Newland Lakes, 8 minutes. Newland Lakes to Malat, which is 19 minutes. From Malat to Elidi, which is a little township on a crossroad, 6 minutes out. And from there it's 6 minutes down to uh, our final destination at Port Lincoln. All up, 68 minutes of flying. Let's start it. Brakes are in. Clear prop. Oh, she's less than happy about that one. Thousand RPM set. I'll be uh, going up to six thousand five hundred. Set, good stuff. That's runway two, was it two nine? Did you get in a traffic 
Bonanza, Julie Kilo Zero, taxiing to runway one one BFR departure to the southeast, Sedona. Someone's on a runway one one takeoff. It sounds like a six knot tailwind. Direction runway two seven, Sedona. Traffic to Duna, Delta Ross Greco is at the uh, fueling point. We'll be uh, taxiing out the runway to Nida. Give me a call once on the run up. Could go down that way. Enter the runway backtrack, that's a grass runway. Better than the entire backtrack thing. Yeah, let's do it. Drugs of Juna, Delta Oscar Echo, taxiing via taxiway Bravo runway 17 to runway Tiana. I'll say hello to Rossi. How you doing? Tim went uh, spotting. Where did you go spotting? I went flying yesterday in a 172. Come to a stop here and do our run ups. So we're doing them on the, you know, prepared surface instead of out there on the dirt. Mix to full rich. Let's go up to 1800 up here. I've got one foul prop. That's definitely foul. How's the other one going? Both foul. Alright. Try to aggressively lean them out. See if that settles it. Not really. No, it's worse. Gonna have to get our spark plugs cleaned out. Let's do that now. So we're going behind us. Yeah, there is. Alright.
Traffic, uh, Juna, Delta Oscar, entering runway 17. Delta Oscar, Juna, Delta Oscar, Gina traffic, uh, Bonanza, Jula, Kilo, Zulu, holding short runway one to so Gina. Hi there, Vati, the next row, yeah, we are definitely on the list. We're the first on the list. <laughs> We're going to get the army through here in the next three days to test everyone. Sounds interesting. Traffic, Sajina, Delta Oscar, Echo, entering runway uh, 2 Niner. We'll be taxing the entire length of 2 Niner and vacating on Alpha. <laughs> All the aircraft, 98, good day. Engine the traffic of Bonanza Jump. Uh, Julie, kill us away. Backtracking run. Way 1 1, to do now. Yes, because a random van parked on the side of the street isn't suspicious at all. <laughs> yep, come to my van and it's not candies anymore, it's a COVID test. <laughs> Traffic Sejuna, Delta Oscar, Echo has vacated the runway uh, to another. Traffic Sejuna, Juliet, Kilo, Zulu enters and backtracks runway 29. Sejuna. Gonna come to a stop here, see if we can clear it at full power. Probably can't, but we'll give it a shot. Traffic 
No, it's not going to work. Well, he's open up the hatch. You can even see the um, the fuel flow meter bouncing around like hack. Get a hanger. <laughs> I've got a failed magneto. So I'm going to have to clear the magnetos. Yeah, I've already done the leaning. Brakes are in and we'll shut it down. Okay, can I have some nice magnetos, please? Thank you. Cool. All right. <laughs> With that done, let's go and do this stuff again because we'll assume that it's been in the hangar, so I now need to do the full checklist. The brakes haven't, the uh, flaps haven't been broken. The ailerons are still attached and moving. That's fuel. Tires look fine. Still plenty of gas in there. That's all fuel. Still has oil in it. Still has fuel in it. That's still attached. That's all fuel. Still attached and moving. Flaps are happy. That's set. That's all attached and moving. Never jump into an aircraft that's been to the mechanic and assume it's working, because it probably isn't. <laughs> Go ahead and push her back a little bit. Get some wing clearance out. Taxing back out that way. All right, we're facing the hangar. We've got the brakes on. I might actually use my um, foot brakes for the start. Alright, that's locked in and let's get moving. Hello Titan Spectre. Right, making sure that no one's going to come walking out of that hangar straight into our prop. We're going to start her up and then taxi on out. Mixed Rich. 
in the grain. Power. Clear prop. That was not him. Lane, you're out. Settled. <laughs> Trim the wrong way around. That's uh, that's disconcerting. <laughs> yeah, that's the first thing I was taught. Actually, I think about the time I had eight hours in Cessna's back in 2003, uh, one of the aircraft that we had had some maintenance issues, and we actually chucked it into the hangar. And the first thing he, the uh, instructor said was do a complete full walk around because. The most likely <laughs> time that an aircraft's going to be broken is after it's just come out of the hangar. 30, 30, looking good. Pairing along nicely. And let's roll in. Indeed, I am broadcasting from the COVID capital of Australia, Broad Meadows. <laughs> One of the two worst suburbs in Australia. <laughs> the other one being not very far away. Yes, imagine if Brad Reeves had been here. <laughs> he would have been blocked. Ha <laughs> ha. What is the mathematical formula to figuring out how uh, a <laughs> magneto is fouled? But what's the actual formula? The numbers. Here's our numbers. You do the uh, magneto check, and if one of the magnetos is fouled, you'll notice because your RPM taco is batting up and down like a rabbit. In the of my ugliest paint job ever. Fair enough. Yes, Stolt Inspector, the uh, Broadmeadows Ford factory, which was shut down a few. a year or two ago? Yeah, that place. And now the COVID capital of Australia. Cool, let's do another mag check just to make sure that we've actually fixed it. Let's do it here. 1000 RPM, mixture fully rich, shutting all the windows. Up to 1900. Eighteen set. A little more steady this time. Yeah, about 75 drop there. Yeah, another 75, good stuff. Drop the carb heat. It's about 100 there. Prop up here. Yeah. 
Worst case scenario is idle with the uh, carby heats on, that gives us about 500 RPM. Carby heat off gives us about 550. There we go. All right, we'll call that ready to go. There's the lights. Traffic to Juna. Delta Oscar Echo is a Piper Comanche. We're taxiing the runway 29 via taxiway Alpha and uh, runway 17. We'll call entering 17. Back on to the dirt. So am I, by the way. <laughs> oh, Lachlan, good stuff. PMDG tax, how about uh, the Aviator 997 offering um, not free, rather expensive rides in a travel air tax? <laughs> no, thanks, Lachlan. Another fiver. Looks like we'll get paid next month. Yay! Oh, the aircraft 98 and uh, AVED 997, as you know, I have money too. <laughs> Thomas, you are unfortunately so correct. Yeah, Orbix really need to update that Brisbane. Desperately. They've got an entirely new runway now, so no real excuse apart from time and the fact that they don't care about Australia anymore apparently <laughs> coming to a stop shall we use the entire runway? won't need it but yeah you don't need it until you do <laughs> yes. <laughs> Traffic to Juno, Delta Oscar Co. Entering one way, two line backtrack. <laughs> hey, you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> The other option would be go around and put them in handcuffs. Okay, <laughs> makes it fully rich. Pumps are on. Cool. Where did that checklist thing go? Okay, controls. Free. And correct. Mixer's rich, proper set. Engine uh, gauges are checked. Trim tab is neutral. Flaps up and door is latched. Ready to go. 
Traffic to Juna, Delta Oscar Echo, runway 29 departing via the left hand downwind. Yeah, coming up. Bye, Sir Juno. Time is 17, but we'll time it from the time that we're about mid runway on the downwind. Climb to 7005. And yeah, up at about 120 knots for the climb. City in traffic, Delta Oscar Echo is on the extended downwind, climbing through 2500, climbing 7500, tracking eastbound. Track to Jenna. Time 18, 22. Okay, RPM coming down to about 24. There we go. And leading a mixture. TK Army, good day. A 300, nice. Is that one on the uh, X plane or is it a old FSX one? Time 22 is Laura Bay. Gotcha. Ah, P3D5. Which uh, Q. 300 is that for you, Aaron? I'm assuming, unless you're a beta tester for Majestic. And if you are a pre beta tester for Majestic, I am uh, jealous. <laughs> okay, it's about 68 minutes down to uh, Port Lincoln from here. 
So I should be on the ground at about half past seven. Should be done and dusted at eight. Then I'll put my rubbish bin out and then uh, wait for the COVID test. Ah, the recall. Yes, I've heard uh, good stories about that. Two minutes to Venus Bay. Ah, uh, was it? Not Venus. The other one. Laura Bay. Never came up as north as or as uh, far west as Laura Bay. We were all south of Haslam uh, back in 2013 when we were doing the television broadcast switchover. Uh, there was a really weird situation between uh, Streaky Bay, Smoky Bay, and uh, Eba Anchorage, whereas they had their own transmitters. And the council was deciding to switch off one of the transmitters, but they weren't sure which. So they're doing a bunch of uh, testing with uh, signal patterns and VHF coverage down here. Part of it was a VHF, part of it was a UHF, and they had to make sure that the two frequencies didn't uh, interfere, destructively interfere with each other. It was an entire rigmarole and it took work months. Uh, we've busted our altitude by 500. <laughs> Just a minute. 22, that is the top of climb time, and that's uh, Venus Bay straight ahead. Sorry. It's not Venus Bay. Venus Bay was the south end of it. Uh, that is Laura Bay. As I said, we never came up this far. Indeed. Well, at this point, I might not be allowed to leave uh, Broad Meadows, but we'll see. <laughs> if I can, I'll uh, go down and uh, join you. Wouldn't mind a little bit of daylight flying, even if it's the 182, 172. 152 is pushing it. Anyhow, we're going to be trekking offshore here. I was considering maybe diverting inside to the shoreline. We might even do that. It'll add an extra two or three minutes, but whatever. That's the altitude we want. We could probably fly the entire flight without the other part today. Uh, just got to lean out. At 14 at the moment, yeah, it's climbing as I lean, so we are rich of peak at the moment. And that feels like the peak. Not quite. Still more. Still more. There she is. <laughs> <coughs> so I'm looking for about 25 degrees less than, what is it, 14, 25? Maybe about 14, 15. There we are. Tray. Uh, the aircraft that come with it installed are the Dash 8 Q400 uh, Pro model by Majestic Software. Has to be the Pro, can't be the pilot. Uh, the other options are the Mad Dog MD88 by Leonardo Software. All of their variants can do it now. So the uh, MD82 is fine to do it, good in the add ons. Just make sure you both use the same aircraft type. So MD82 has to be an MD82 match. MD88 has to be an MD88 match, etc. Uh, you can do it on the TFDI 717, as much as I have a hate, love hate relationship with that aircraft. <laughs> uh, you can do it on the Aerosoft A320, A319, A321. 
Aerosoft one, not the FS Labs one. And you can apparently do it on the uh, Aerosoft A330. I'm told it's really buggy, but it's possible to do. So yeah, that's a good collection now. Arjun nowadays is waiting for his job back, which might take a year, as I'm told today. They made an announcement uh, this morning that they're furloughing and further, I think it's 2,200 pilots for at least six months. Not the most ideal situation for employment. There you go. Um, I've never done it on the Q300. Certainly not the freeware one. I need to catch up on some maths. 26 is now, so directly over Smoky Bay, which is this big chunk of water right here. Now the Smoky Bay is called Smoky Bay because when Bass and Flinders were circumnavigating Australia in the Tom Thumb, which is a tiny little outrigger, essentially a canoe, and they sailed all the way around Australia in it, um, they came to this part of the world, from the east of course, and uh, they saw these uh, essentially bushfires. <laughs> They weren't just bushfires though, they were like Aborigine lit, big chunky fires that were burning off the land intentionally. And it was very intense in this bay, so they call it Smoky Bay. Indeed. Yeah, study level level uh, 200 would be pretty fun. They're similar to the 300, apart from the size and all the V-speeds. <laughs> Flying a giraffe. <laughs> Good stuff. So yeah, back in the old days, uh, the Aborigines used to burn off their land as they uh, moved through. Essentially, you, you'd recreate rebirth of um, vegetation, so you have to burn it all out before the new growth comes back. And the new growth is where the, the food comes from. Yams and that kind of stuff. Bush tucker. So as the trees got old and stopped fruiting, you'd burn them, and then that would make them start fruiting again. So that's why this uh, bay got its name Smoky Bay. According to that, we're at Haslam already. Are we? Not sure. Yes, we are. That's Haslam. So this little peninsula here is as far north or far west as uh, the DBCDE got to um, play with. Past there is the remote regional council. So the next major township south of here is Eba Anchorage. It's not really a major township, it's got a population of like 85, right there. I'm very familiar with the map of this area, so... <laughs> I've never been here in the physical person, but I've studied it. I studied the map of this area for a year, essentially. Uh, they're doing testing on how the uh, interface relationships between UHF television broadcast stations were interfering with each other. With each other. It was an interesting study. Now trying to figure out who would apply, who would um, require a satellite television service to regain access to TV when the uh, analog service was shut down. Put some more math in. 20 bucks from the toilet. Good stuff. Yep, 
If only I could be amazing at math. <laughs> 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. That one's easy. Cool, so the next one is Streaky Bay, which is this big bay straight ahead. You can see uh, Smoky Bay is this big wide thing, and Streaky Bay is this little bay inside the bay down the bottom. Streaky Bay is named after, once again, Bass and Flinders came through here in their little tiny boat and uh, when they went into the bay there at Streaky Bay they found this kind of streaky oil slicky kind of stuff on the top of the water so they named it Streaky Bay and it turns out that stuff is essentially because the bay is so shallow and it is a bay inside a bay it gets a lot of uh, seaweed growth in there because it doesn't get too uh, rough and the seaweed that lives in that bay uh, spawns once every year or so which is essentially it has a pollen explosion underwater and all of that stuff is kind of oily and it floats to the surface which is the point because you can't you know have the zygotes and the gametes meet each other underwater they have to be on the surface so the oily um, essentially undersea pollen would rise to the top as a kind of a sheen on the top of the water. Only happens a couple of days a year. So it just happened that uh, Bass and Flinders entered the bay at the right time to see this uh, weird streaky oil effect on the top of the water. Hence Streaky Bay. That there is Eber Anchorage, just off to our left. Eber Anchorage was a uh, kind of medium shallow port. They used to uh, anchor ships into there. Mostly wheat coming out of this area, so before the days of, of the train, I'd load up all of the produce onto the ships and send it out. That's EBA, EBA Anchorage. Indeed, we are almost out of Adelaide. We'll be on Adelaide in, on Monday. Now, if you have a look at uh, the airfield at Streaky Bay, you can see the name is Streaky Bay. Beautiful. And the ICAO code is YKBY. Why is that, you'd imagine? Wouldn't Streaky Bay be STR or STK or something? Well, KBY stands for Car Cultivate. And the name comes from the way that uh, the Regional Council of, the, of uh, South Australia divided up all the land into 100 acre lots. They set aside one once one area and then another area and they'd name each hundred acre lot something so Streaky Bay was always the name of the bay itself but all the land was considered to be part of the hundred of car cultivate and because the uh, airfield is not exactly at the bay it is called uh, car cultivate the area around it Karkotobi is the Aboriginal name for the area. Streaky Bay is the Bass and Flinders name for the area. Seems nice that uh, in the late 18, uh, late 1800s they were already recognising that these areas had their own names already by the Aboriginal people that lived here. So even when they went subdividing up all of these uh, plots of land up into their 100 acre lots, they were still thinking about that. Let me see if I can see the town down there.
You could have put him up directly over the town, almost. There it is. Beautiful. So that there is the township of Streaky Bay. And that's the airfield. That used to be called Carcultaby. And is now called Streaky Bay because, you know, that's the township. Most people recognise the township. They don't recognise the, the hundred of Carcultaby, which is this little plot of land with the farm around it. Because Carcultaby is not even really a town. It's essentially, Carcultaby is just a location which is sold land for farming. Designated plotted land. Whereas Streaky Bay is actually it's a proper town. So they've renamed the, the airfield after the town. The main uh, UHF broadcasting uh, television tower is situated in Streaky Bay itself. And they used to have a booster signal up at Eber, Anchorage, and another one down at um, Corraby. And there's another one called Wantanobi, Port Kenny. So all these little uh, booster signal towers all across the, this area. It's pretty flat, but it's not perfectly flat. There's a few hills. Now there is the air highway that makes its way out of Adelaide all the way out to Eucla towards the uh, Western Australia border. Anyhow, that is Streaky Bay, time 35, and I'll say 46 for Venus Bay. That should be fairly easy to spot. Let's get ourselves back on the track. We were meant to fly almost directly over the airfield, but we've obviously come over the township instead of the airfield, because I've been meandering all over the place. Okay, I'm showing east plus five, uh, make it plus six. Cool. Couple of sand dunes down there. So Venus Bay has a little township inside Venus Bay. On the north side is the township of Venus Bay and on the south side is Port Kenny. K-E-N-N-Y. Not Kennedy, just Kenny. Like they killed Kenny. <laughs> Venus Bay and Port Kennedy is uh, very nice, very, uh, what do you call it, insulated bay harbour. Reminds me a little bit of uh, the Gippsland Lakes, in a way. You've got a very narrow head, headland. Can't imagine any shipping happening down there. So why did they call it Port Kenny? Not really sure.
Yeah, uh, level D, not for P3D version 4 and above, only for 3 and below. I like the uh, level D because that was the original. Um, level D 767 derives out of the PIC 767, which was released like late 2000, the year 2000. So it's level D uh, simulation 767 is essentially 20 years old. Venus Bay is spotted. Now because everything around here has two names, the township of Venus Bay is inside the hundred of Waitera. So the hundred of Waitera, the hundred being the hundred hectare subdivision, and then the actual township of Venus Bay inside it. Just as uh, Streaky Bay was inside the hundred of Car Cultiby, uh, Venus Bay is inside the hundred of Waitira. Much further inland on the A1 highway is uh, the hundred of Puchera. I'm not even sure we can see it from here and there's nothing much to see. It's essentially the highway, a railway and some grain silos. Most of the towns out here are essentially that. Grain silos, a railway and a road. I used to love looking at all of the the names of the hundreds and where the borders were so like trying to figure out how each one got named and then how the subdivisions happened because if you look as you drive it along the air highway um, if you're using the old address system from before 2012 uh, you'd see things like number one is next to number 99 which is num next to number 67 <laughs> they weren't even in order just random numbers along the road. 19967 87 42 all right next to each other. Okay, three minutes and we should be uh, at Venus Bay or a beam Venus Bay. Eight minutes after that, we'll be at Newland Lakes. Time 54. Hey there, James, how you doing? Probably, uh, we did have a center online and I was about to tune him, but he's disappeared on us. One thing that they have a massive lack of in this part of the world is airfields. A lot of farm land though, so I'd imagine a lot of farmers land light aircraft on uh, on their fields. That is one thing that I do remember from looking at uh, this area quite extensively in map, Google Maps, Google Earth, 
we used to use a different thing as well, which ran a subscription to, which was very high quality. Um, can't remember the name of that. If it, anybody happens to know, just drop the name because I've forgotten it. But uh, there used to be an online service which was extremely very detailed, um, essentially aerial photography maps. Essentially, that fire Cessna on a on a photography mission, fly up and down a whole search pattern, and you get really, really in-depth maps, photograph, top-down view. I think it was just Australia. And I remember they uh, purchased a subscription to it for like thousands of dollars. Near map, that's the one. Thanks, Bubs. <laughs> Yeah, it was near map. We had the uh, full subscription at work, being the Department of Broadband Communications and the Digital Economy, DBCDE. My gosh, that was an, a mouthful of name. Yeah, it was near map. Thanks. <laughs> uh, time 47. Well, Venus Bay is that thing, and Port Kenny is just going behind the uh, post there. I'm not even sure if Port Kenny's in the... Uh, in the scenery, I'm thinking it should be there. Just comparing it to the Google Maps. Yeah, it's got to be there. It's that road. Something in this is Port Kenny here. Somewhere between there and here. Unfortunately, the town's not there on our uh, <laughs> thing. Sure, I'll do that unless we get stuck at home. I'll have to listen to the news to make sure people in Broadmeadows are allowed to leave. Might be on lockdown with the army coming through. <laughs> They're literally sending the army to us over the next three days to give us all COVID tests. Yeah, just generally, like, enough to get through this whiz wheel stuff because I don't know the whiz wheel I kind of touched on the whiz, whiz wheel back in uh, G, GFPT but uh, that was more than 10 years ago that was 03 and 17 years ago <laughs> Josh how time flies <laughs> yeah, I'm assuming that the uh, the army's going to come through and uh, knock, 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 compulsory COVID test, stick this in your nose. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I want to drive down to Rabin. No, what are you doing in Rabin? Flying a plane? Definitely not. <laughs> Get in your house. <laughs> Okay, time is 50. In four minutes we should be passing over Newland Lake. That there is the Newland Lakes. Let's hug the shoreline a little bit better than we are. No need to go blasting over water when we don't need to.
the very far north part of uh, Newland Lakes, I think I'm just covering it with my panel now, is uh, the Woolshed Cave. Basically a set of caves on the sea called the Woolshed Caves. Hi there, Bubs. Yeah, the spreadsheet, you can buy it for zero dollars off the website shown there, xlpilotlogbook.com. They have one free sample, which is a navigation flight log, and it does, in fact, have essentially an automated whiz wheel that'll uh, do the heading for you based on your winds and track and speed, and it'll also give you your time based on uh, the winds, <laughs> track, speed, <laughs> as I was saying before. So that's just each step incrementally. Quite useful. Does take away the whiz wheel though. Tristan's dropping out of Streaky Bay. Good stuff. Spencer's 40 miles from uh, Fort Lincoln. He can probably do some uh, touch and goes if he wants to. Or he can land and log off. That's fine too. No one's saying that you have to be there. So yeah, these are Lake Newland in the Hundred of Colton. Very not Aborigine names there. A little bit inland from uh, the Newland Lakes. This mountain here is called Mount Wedge. W-E-D-G-E -E. Not a particularly large mountain, it's only about mm, 18, not even that, it's about 800 feet, I believe. Might be a little higher than that. We're about 90 miles out. So we have it, Newland Lakes, the Hundred of Colton, and uh, Lake Wedge in the distance. We have a little bit of a point that goes out a little bit further to the uh, west. right there and the uh, Waldegrave Islands just off the coast there on the uh, south side of this peninsula there's a very distinctive like bay a kind of like boom straight into the middle almost a perfectly c-shaped bay and that bay is called Elliston. Probably end up on the right side of the aeroplane as we pass by. We're kind of leaving the area that I'm, I was uh, studying in 2013. Elliston was kind of my colleague was taking care of that. I'd sometimes look over the shoulder and have a look at it. 
But yeah, my area was mostly Streaky Bay and the hundreds around it. Out to Car Coltaby, uh, Waitera, Venus Bay, Port Kenny. Anything south of Port Kenny was other people's thing. So that was a very localised study on uh, radio frequency propagation inside that rather small area, to be honest. We've already passed it. <laughs> That's why I was yapping away and excited about Streaky Bay and Haslam and Ibaranki Ridge and <laughs> a bunch of other names that I've uh, missed, like the Whistling Rocks and Yanabi, Palubi. Ibaranki Ridge is inside Palubi, one of those other hundreds of surrounding a, a town. They used to call them hundreds, hundreds of. Lot 57, hundred of Paluvi. That was literally the address. Lot 57, hundred of Yemeni. And the hundreds weren't. The way that they figured out the hundreds is that you've got your hundred acres from the council and the council decided to split it in half and you'd end up with lot one and lot two and they'd split lot, uh, split lot one in half and they'd become lot one and lot two, uh, lot one and lot three, but lot two's already, already been assigned so you can't rename it. So any lot that exists already is always going to be that lot. So when they split lot two in half and lot three already exists, we're going to have lot 4 next to lot 2. Difficult, difficulty comes when you're getting down to like lot 70, lot 75. At which point, there's no chance that any of that is right next to each other. So lot 75 is going to be next to lot number 2. <laughs> there you go. Uh, back in 2013, we were halfway through the big study of every single location using our wonderful near maps and uh, doing frequency propagation overlays and uh, doing measurements would send out technicians in a van and they'd have a television antenna on the van and they'd just sit there and pick up radio signals and like retune different frequencies and then they'd move the van half a kilometer down the road and rerun the test again trying to find the weak spots in the signal send us back the information at the end of the day and then we'd plot it all on the map <laughs> and see where all the weak spots were and you'd you'd start to see essentially you know the uh, radio like little bands of uh, radio weakness and it's usually because either there's a hill in the way or because another transmitter was starting to transmit on the same frequency or a related phase relationship frequency yeah it's very interesting stuff I loved it still the best job I had. I became the subject matter expert of that campaign. Before we uh, all stopped caring about it. wing there's that very sea that bay that I was talking about that's almost like a perfect letter C Elliston almost looks like a crater just rammed into the earth right there and made that bay Beautiful. Okay, time is on the hour.
13. Aussie well, aircraft, I'll continue flying this aircraft on Monday up to Broken Hill, and then we'll talk about changing aircraft after that. Possibly to the Piper Cherokee? Don't know. Do you have any suggestions? J160. Well, we have to get our Broken Hill down to Hay, which is huge flight over desert. We could fly the J160, but it'll take about five hours, so maybe not. Maybe we'll take this one to Hay. Hay is a tiny little town in the middle of uh, New South Wales. On the edge of not being in the desert. <laughs> 747. <laughs> 747 to hay. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> Next little indentation that we see down there is Syringa Beach. Pretty remote location. Let's steady out the aircraft and reset our gyros. I reckon one thirty six. 34, somewhere around there. Bit more cloud happening up there. Might grab our AWIS. Before I do that, let's tuck in the auto part because I'm going to be floating all over the sky if we don't take care. There we go, all the parts in. Now I can take our hands off the controls without having issues. HSI, I'm just flying headings. I'm not flying the uh, GPS today because I've been floating around all over the track. That's on purpose because I'm talking about the towns that we're flying over. Automated weather information service. Port Lincoln. Time zero nine at zero three Zulu. Wind calm. Visibility two five kilometers. Cloud overcast two thousand nine hundred feet. Temperature one three two point one one. QNH one zero two four hectopascals. How do you stall? Why don't you look at your speed while you land? Anyway, QNH 1024. And I'm hearing uh, cloud overcast at 2,900 feet, so I'm going to have to descend. Probably 1,500 or so. I, I was saying, looking ahead, seeing the clouds getting a bit lower. Let's do it now. Uh, the wind is calm, so I can do any direction. Only one nine sounds like the most likely. And we're probably going to vacate and go on Alpha. Another option would be landing on 2 3 on the grass. Uh, 
pulling up too hard. There is such a thing as a light hand on the yoke. Okay, going to reduce the power. And with any luck, because we're trimmed to fly at 160 odd knots, the aircraft will just descend on its own natural. Showing 170 knots on the uh, ground speed. And I'm going to give it a little bit more mixture as we are descending in, into thicker air. Time 13 before we get to what's that next point? Ah, Lake Malata. So there is a mountain just north of Lake Malata called Mount Hope. It's not a particularly tall mountain, it's only about a thousand feet. But yeah, we don't want to be uh, dropping down to a thousand five hundred feet too early. We do have an MSA here. And that MSA is 2,300. All right, might need a stick of that uh, 2,003. Johnny gives us, uh, oh yeah, it's about 400 feet clearance of the cloud. We could, of course, fly around the mountain. Just over here we have a Lake Hamilton. Was it uh, 500 above cloud? Down and below? Was it 1,000 above cloud and 500 below? <laughs> Looking for my leg. Four thousand, just gonna give it a little bit more mixture. Once we get down to two thousand five hundred we'll level off and then uh, have a look what our position is. Look for Mount Hope as well. I know it's out here somewhere.
You guys that are still in school, have you ever read the book Blue Fin? That was in the syllabus ages ago, in the 1990s. About a uh, fishing trawler based in uh, Port Lincoln. Let me know if you know it. I think it was made into a crappy Australian TV drama as well. <laughs> Don't know Blue Finn. Oh well. They're probably uh, teaching kids these days uh, none of the old white man stories. <laughs> it's pretty generic. Oh no, the fishing trawler will get hurt by the storm. Whatever will they do? Thirteen. Yeah, just about there. What's the heading meant to be? 137. Yeah. Got 11 knots. Mostly tailwind, a little bit across. Indeed, they ran into a big, chunky, subtly cyclone thing. <laughs> and of course, it's a story about a small business. A fishing trawler business, and they had to go up against the, the big corporation fishing trawler. And try and eke out a living. Okay. Two thousand five hundred. We'll uh, rumble back into maximum power. Get that speed back up to about one fifty. Need to trim out a little bit now. Fall back to 25 ish so we don't over speed the plane. And I'm going to lean power again. Getting better. That's got to be the peak about there. I think I've spotted our hill. Mount Hope. Twenty six. Let's see how that goes for us. Thirteen. Nineteen. 
25. One minute off, not too bad. You don't say that's missing an entire lake. I think it has. Drink it. That should have been a lake right there. Malata Lake is not here. I can see the hill. Mount Hope's there. Where's my missing lake? There it is. Okay, well, <laughs> much further inland than I expected. There she is. That's where I'm meant to be flying, just skimming the edge of it. But, uh, we're not. <laughs> That's, um, Lake Malata. Everything word. It is in fact a dry salt lake out here in like not the desert. Let's see if we can pick up the old Port Lincoln. Port Lincoln NDB on 389, still broadcasting to this day. Check that that actually picked it up. Yes, it did. Look at that. Can we hear it? ADF. Yeah. PLC Ba 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 Correct Identified Port Lincoln Time's at town. Edili. Time one nine. Ah, okay, we've already passed it. Cool. Sixteen miles. We'll uh, chop the power and start sign now. <laughs> I don't think P3D has PAL naturally, but I think there is an add-on that like some of the sceneries you have to tune a certain frequency and by tuning the frequency you turn on the PAL um, by memory the OZX um, scenery at a specific airport I think it's Orbost has that you don't have to transmit on the frequency you just need to tune it and it pops in 
traffic, Port Lincoln, Delta Os Actually, that's not the transmitting frequency. No, it's not done. Run the wrong frequency, should be on 1280. Just broadcast at the Port Lincoln call to wherever CMM is. <laughs> Traffic Port Lincoln Delta Oscar Echo is a Papa Comanche 2500, 13 miles to the west of the field. We'll be entering circuit uh, runway 19 at time 26, Traffic Port Lincoln. Alright, we'll be uh, Approaching the runway from the uh, dead side of the field. Or will we? Yeah, we'll have to go to the dead side of the field anyway, regardless. Runway 01 or 19? 01's nicer. Wind is calm. It's still runway 1. So we'll uh, fly over to the dead side of the field, we'll join a uh, kind of a right here and join back into a downwind left downwind runway one, one, uh, zero 01 so it's that way cool passing straight through over the top through here and full circle Cummins Town thanks for that Yeah, we're well far east of where I have an experience. Barely been here on this part of the world. Very familiar with Streaky Bay, not familiar with Port Lincoln. Either we don't have any scenery from Streaky Bay. But we probably will on the next simulator, won't we? <laughs> the Antonov 225 is right because there's only one of them. Traffic Port Lincoln, Delta Oscar Echo is 7 miles from the field, we'll be uh, crossing into the dead side, then joining uh, left crossway in the runway 01. I'm going to start slowing down so we can get our landing gear down by the time we're on downwind. Speed should wash away nicely. About two minutes out. I'm going to fly over the field at 2,500 feet, then we'll uh, descend down to the circuit altitude in the dead zone. actual township of uh, Port Lincoln is a little bit further south than the airfield. There is indeed an airport at Woomera. They use it to uh, transport military stuff in there. There's our airfield right here. Crossover midfield at 2,000-ish feet and then we'll pop around. Coming up, prop, eh, we'll do the prop on that one. There's 2000. Traffic Port Lincoln, Delta Oscar Echo is overhead field, 2000 feet. We'll be joining from the dead wind, uh, dead side of the field onto cross the end of runway 01.
Okay, I've crossed into the dead side of the field, which means that the circuit is happening on that side over there. That scenery does look lovely, I agree. The airfield is essentially at sea level. Keep going down, come on. Aussie Aircraft wants a short field landing on a long field. <laughs> Fair enough. Traffic Port Lincoln, Delta Oscar Echo is joining a uh, crosswind runway zero one. Yeah, this is the Orbix aircraft uh, airfield. One of the freeways from there. I should put the link in properly. I'll make sure I do that. <laughs> Mixer and proper forward. Traffic Port Lincoln, Delta Oscar Echo, is turning downwind runway 01. And again, coming down. One green. Okay, lane checklist. Brakes are released. Undercarriage is down. Mixture fully rich. Prop is fully forward. Pump is on. Lights are on. Seats and houses are secure. Being at the proper altitude might help. Anchor traffic, Delta Ross Greco turning base, runway uh, 01. Flat one. Second stage flat. Itty bitty overshoot, I'll continue that turn through. All of that. Trevor Port Lincoln, Delta Ross Greco, final runway 01. Spencer gets that one. <laughs> Actual number 84. Pass through the cross. C 
64, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> ah, random number. Light aircraft are easier because they're uh, going slower. <laughs> Travelport Lincoln, Delta Oscar Echo, vacated runway 33, uh, so again runway 01, crossing runway 33. For Lincoln traffic, Delta Oscar Echo has vacated all runways. Visitor parking's over there. That's like a local parking over there. And that's a Rex Airlines parking over there. On to the grass we go. And we'll pop the parking down there. Are good. I get out of park. We take your part on the grass all the time in light aeroplanes like this. Sometimes you land on grass. Door open. Some runways are made out of grass. Some runways at this very airport that we were at right now are made out of grass. In fact, runway 33 is a grass runway. That runway right, right there ahead of us, that's a grass runway. Well, yeah, big aircraft will uh, probably sink into the grass. You don't want that. Why won't he stay in a straight line? Edge lighting? Yeah, sounds cool. Shut that door. There's some wheel trucks. There's a pito.
And there's a tie down. This aircraft doesn't have a cover over the windows, which is good because we don't have to put a cover over the windows and probably bad in the long run because it means the windows get scratched. You end up having to replace them more often. But there we go. From to Port Lincoln on Monday, I will be flying out of Port Lincoln into Adelaide for Milk Run Monday, and then onwards from Adelaide to uh, what's the place called up there? Broken Hill, Port Perry. Cool. I unfortunately will be skipping Port Perry. I have heard of it. I do know it's there, but um, yeah, I'll be going to Adelaide and then off to uh, Broken Hill. Anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, in the next few days I'll be having a COVID-19 test administered to me by the Australian Defence Force. Some armies coming to Broadmeadows to test us all. Test us all. Hope you enjoyed the flights, and uh, I'll catch you guys on the weekend. I am working on Saturday, so that means probably uh, Saturday late afternoon evening i'll be uh, possibly joining a backpack event till then ciao for now